In this video I'd like to look at the uh, fantastic game Michal Tal against Wolfgang Ullmann. Um, now I've looked already at uh, this game in quite some detail on, uh, on my blog on matthewsadler.me.uk um, but I also wanted to do a, a quick little video just to uh, show the game and uh, explain some of the main points. So this game um, I first saw in a book by uh, Sakaev and Lander called um, um, I think it was the Russian the Russian method of chess 2.0 some uh, some uh, amazing name like that um, and I saw the game and uh, well I was just wowed by the uh, uh, the combination uh, in it so um, uh, yeah so I thought it was just a, a very nice one to analyze when I started analyzing it also discovered um, well an awful lot of interesting points that hadn't really been brought to light by the annotations. So um, this game was played by Tal against Ullmann in the Alakin Memorial in 1971 um, and it features the French Tarash opening. So 1 e4 e6, d4 d5, and uh, um, Tal plays the uh, the Tarash variation, three knight d2. Uh, on the plus side, um, the e4 pawn is protected, which means that uh, well, white can uh, delay committing the uh, the tension in the centre for um, for a little while. That can give him some flexible options. On the downside, the knight on d2 blocks the bishop on c1. So you know, sort of quick development is uh, is um, uh, is made a little bit more difficult. Um, Another positive point is that White gets the opportunity to defend his D pawn with C2 to C3 if necessary. So uh, that makes setting up a pawn chain B2, C3, D4, E5, um, well, a, a regular possibility in uh, in these lines. Well, Ullman played um, the old main line here, which is to play C5 at once, striking against D4. Uh, Black's idea is actually that he doesn't fear um, getting a uh, an isolated pawn after e takes d5, e takes d5. That is a pawn weakness, but um, black gets a lot of free development in return. Um, now, Tal recount, recounts um, uh, before the game that uh, he really wanted to surprise Ullman. Ullman was known as a, well, a very strong grandmaster, very well prepared, um, but maybe, yeah, maybe a little less um, comfortable when he was um, out of his known lines. So Tal... Um, prepared something um, a little bit uh, a little bit offbeat, although it had been played before, and actually uh, Ullman had actually also had a game with it uh, already. That was knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Um, White's trying to keep the tension in the centre uh, for as long as possible, not uh, committing to d takes c5 or e takes d5, and um, by doing so, he's hoping that this keeps complexity in the position and that Black's got to try and decide, OK, which structure do I want to play and where do I want to put my pieces? And is the fact that the central tension is still there uh, going to stop me doing that? Um, it's all sorts of things. I think, you know, especially a, um, uh, a player who's used to his systems, he could uh, easily get confused by this. Um, now, apparently, Ullman thought here for 20 minutes, uh, according to Tal. So Tal felt that it's, his opening had been a success. Um, I mean, what he couldn't know was that um, um, Ullman played this this very line um, uh, eight or nine times subsequently. You know, I think even in uh, in 2012 in the World Seniors, he was still playing this line. So um, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if uh, if Ullman had prepared this, but maybe just not quite thoroughly enough for this uh, for this first game. Um, Ullman took here a, a very interesting decision. Um, he played the move. D takes e4, knight takes e4, and bishop d7, which is far from obvious. Now, on the one on the one hand, it's um, um, you can look at uh, at uh, a black's choice of d takes e4 with um, with furrowed brow, um, as with d takes e4, black actually frees this knight on d2, so it moves to e4, which then frees the bishop on c1. So actually, with this move, d takes e4. Black's actually repairing the biggest uh, defect of White's third move, the Tarash variation with three knight d2. On the other hand, um, Black is opening up some very specific tactical ideas, and they're all based around that uh, aggressive but also slightly exposed bishop on 
b5. Uh, black is actually threatening to play knight takes d4 in this position, which um, opens up an attack on the bishop on b5. Um, so there's, black's actually injecting, uh, he's released some tension with d takes e4, uh, some pawn tension, but he's actually introducing some peace tension here with bishop d7. And white's got to try and, uh, and find a way to deal with that. Now, about six years later, uh, in, I think in Tallinn 1977, Tal played castles here, which again is very interesting. Um, um, actually, Ullmann equalised relatively easily, uh, only to lose the endgame. Um, I mean, in, in, in those days, uh, 1977, Tal was, uh, was a very, very fine technical player. Um, but, um, but here, uh, Tal, filled with the joy of youth, <laughs> six years earlier, he played the move Bishop G5. Now it's a great um, uh, developing move, really feels like Morphe, you know, this type of uh, play. Um, bringing pieces out, aggressive squares, attacking an opponent's uh, piece, so um, forcing the opponent to do something. You know, it feels very, very um, sort of uh, classical and 1850s really. Um, but Black does have, uh, does have his resources. His first uh, response is Queen A5 check. Um, attacking that bishop on b5 again, that aggressive but exposed bishop. Uh, and then knight to c3. Um, so white's actually forced to retreat a piece. And um, now it's black's move again, so he can uh, decide what to do here. Um, now, I mean, if you look at white's position, it looks like, uh, you know, he's doing very well. He's got uh, bishops and knights developed, ready to castle. Black's king still in the centre. Um, pieces... Uh, on the king's side, not developed yet. Khan castle queen side because uh, the bishop on g5 is uh, stopping the black king from moving. Um, but on the other hand, um, there is some sort of um, um, tension between all those pieces. I mean, look at the black queen on a5, bishop on d7. So they're um, uh, sort of eyeing that bishop on b5. You've got a knight on c6 and a pawn on c5 attacking the pawn on d4. And also along the fifth rank, you've got the queen that's attacking that bishop on b5. But beyond it, the, um, the bishop on g5. And, you know, after c takes d4, knight takes d4, that bishop on g5 is unprotected. I mean, there's nothing quite concrete yet in, um, uh, you know, to refute white setup. But you can sort of see that the way black has placed his pieces, you know, in this specific position, with a specific position of, uh, of white's pieces, there is some tactical danger for white. Now, there are a number of interesting possibilities, um, all of them really based around um, annoying those um, advanced white pieces. Um, you know, those aggressive pieces of bishop on b5, bishop on g5. I mean, they're great, they're putting pressure on black's position, but that also means that they're very easy to attack. Um, now, Caroli, uh, in his three-volume biography of, uh, of Tal, suggested h6 here, which is uh, a decent move. Um, a6 has also been suggested, and we analyse it in quite some detail uh, in the blog. Um, I just want to point out one line, um, because um, it sort of shows you know, the drawbacks of White's sort of generally good development, and how you know, a very specific form of development from black can actually you know, cause enormous problems. After this move, uh, well, in the blog, analyze d5, which is also the move suggested by Sakaev and Lander. Um, but if white just says, well, you know, I mean, uh, fine, I'm just gonna castle, getting all my pieces out, attacking, then in actual fact, c takes d4 is extremely unpleasant. Um, knight takes d4 allows queen takes g5, and queen takes d4 allows Bishop takes f3, followed by queen takes g5. I mean, black is actually just winning a piece here. And, you know, from the white point of view, you know, you could look at this position and say, but wait a minute, you know, I've done everything right. I've developed my pieces in one move. I've castled quickly. Why am I losing a piece? It's simply that, you know, there's, there is room in chess for this very specific tactical um, concrete development where you develop your pieces, normally with black, actually, and just try and exploit the, where, the place where, where white has already put his pieces to. And this is a very good example of, um, you know, black's got much less development than white, and yet still he's winning a piece. Um, so a6 would have been very interesting, and actually Ullman played it uh, two or three times later with good results. Um, in the game against Tal, he played the move 
c takes d4 um yeah i mean looking back on it you sort of say you know my goodness why are you opening the center against tal but um, um it is actually quite a decent move knight takes d4 bishop b4 um again blacks you know making use of that queen on a5 and putting pressure on white's uh, on white's pieces now tal played castles i mean that's the sort of move that he always played um, and Ullman took on c3, b takes c3. But th here, this is really where, um, you know, he made um, a big error. Um, what you always need to be very careful about when you're playing these sort of positions with black is, um, it, it's, you know, it's, the, it's white's attacking possibilities. And um, um, very often when the pieces have been developed in one move to uh, one square. Those are the very best positions those pieces can reach. And those are where, you know, all of the tactical possibilities are going to happen. And after Queen takes c3, um, well, White's pieces are absolutely perfectly placed to launch this incredible in uh, assault that, uh, uh, that, that Tal does. Um, as what we'll see uh, later, uh, somewhere around the 15th move, um, it would have been very useful for black again to try and knock away um, uh, the uh, opponent's pieces from their best squares and play h6. Because um, if white plays bishop h4, you know, trying to maintain his attacking structure, um, then black could play queen takes c3 here. And, uh, well, he certainly would not be losing straight away as in the game. Um, again, I, if you've watched the, the previous uh set of um, videos I did on the, on the game uh, Tal against Fuster. You'll notice this general idea again of just knocking uh, pieces away, the opponent's attacking pieces away from their um, ideal attacking squares and that just gives you just a couple of extra crucial defensive resources. Um, White could also play a move like bishop e3. Uh, that then stops queen takes c3 due to uh, um, this rather nasty uh, tactic, bishop d4, and g7 is going to hang. Um, but um, after bishop e3, black can continue with a move like knight e7. Um, when the game goes on, basically, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite unclear. Uh, I think a game of Steins when bishop d3 here carried on like this, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, you know, white's got attacking chances, black's got um, um, a better structure. However, thankfully for us, um, Ullman took on c3, and I get the feeling that he, that he did this pretty quickly. Um, apparently, after the next move, um, Ullman thought for an hour and 50 minutes. Um, must have been kicking himself that he didn't play it just that little, didn't spend his thing just that little bit sooner. But that does make me think, really, that I think that Ullman had maybe even prepared this with, uh, um, with Black. Tal played this incredible move, um, knight f5. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, it feels, uh, you know, very dangerous. But after e takes f f5, rook e1, bishop e6, queen d6, a6, that's basically the end of the natural moves for white. I mean, rook on the open file, queen in, stopping the king from moving away, eyeing that e7, c7, d8 squares. I mean, those are natural moves. But after this move, um, it's not actually that easy. Um, one of the natural things you might look at is to um, to play rook takes e6. But after f takes e6, queen e6, king f8, not very obvious how white's going to proceed. Also bearing in mind that his bishop on b5 and his rook on a1 are, uh, are hanging. Um, so that's a little bit weird. And it's not very easy at all to... Um, uh, to spot, you know, where is um, uh, where is White actually getting through here? Um, I mean, uh, a move like Rook A D one is uh, is very obvious. Uh, threatening Queen D eight check, by the way, with uh, with Mate. But if we remove the Bishop pinning the Knight, then Queen D eight no longer works. And this move is very tempting, Queen D seven, King F eight. But we're not getting anywhere at all after that. Black seems to have sufficient defensive resources. Um, 
but Tal found a quite amazing idea here. I mean, um, in actual fact, you know, the, it's, it's the undeveloped black pieces that seem to be performing a sterling defensive job here. The knight on g8 covers e7, the rook on a8 covers d8. Um, but what Tal noticed was that there is a an undeveloped black piece that is not performing its duty, and that's the rook on h8, which is not covering f8. And, um, well, he found a quite amazing idea here. Um, if you managed to spot it already, then, you know, really well done, because uh, I certainly didn't, actually. Um, it came as a wow, you know, when I was, uh, you know, reading through the book and seeing this game. He went bishop d2, and after queen c2, he went bishop b4. And where is he aiming at? He's aiming at the f8 square. Um, I mean, who would have thought this bishop on g5 that looks so good could have an even better spot on b4? Um, and the key point is, of course, if knight f6, which is more or less the only move to cover uh, the f8 square, then queen e7 is mate due to the uh, the pin on the knight on c6. So um, uh, Ullman played uh, a takes b5, and there followed queen f8, king d7, rook e d1. Uh, that was with the aim of... Um, um, that the bishop might even drop back to e1 uh, to protect f2 if ever that was required. Extremely, uh, extremely precise from Tal. King c7, queen takes a8, and with uh, a few seconds left on his clock, um, Ullman resigned. Um, his king's in all sorts of trouble. I mean, rook c1's coming in and uh, pretty much anything. And above all that, after knight takes b4, then um, queen d8, King c6, queen d6 is uh, is mate. So, um, well, there we are. Fantastic game. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want a bit more detail on Black's defensive possibilities and uh, all the ideas he could have done to try and save himself, then uh, take a look at my uh, at my blog entry on uh, matthewsadler.me.uk. Thanks very much.